during the session, we had a nice summary, which is that nature is a lot cleverer than we are, meaning that we, you know, every time we think we actually understand what's going on, there's this something new that pops up, and we are puzzled by it. And I think that the, right now, the big questions are, in my uh, opinion, what's the highest energy cosmic ray? So what are these particles with this incredibly energetic states, uh, 10 to the 7 times more than uh, we can do in the laboratory, so 10 million times more energetic? What's their origin? Who, you know, which object in the universe is accelerating them? What's the mechanism? And what can we do by looking at them in terms of uh, actually understanding how particles accelerate, how they interact, and how the, does the universe, the very sort of energized universe, works? Many big questions came up with the last generation of, of experiments, which are very large detectors on the ground. These are hundreds of kilometer square arrays of detectors. Mm -hmm. And to get more answers at this highest energy um, frontier, we really need to go to space, in my opinion. I think space will give us a chance to have much, much bigger uh, sensitivity to these cosmic rays of very, very high energy cosmic rays by monitoring a very large part of the atmosphere as a whole. So I think that's the next challenge. And you know, we have current technologies that can already do an order of magnitude improvement. And I think we can work on technologies that might actually bring us even further along that line to be able to really understand these most extreme accelerators in the universe. We've known about you know, cosmic rays for a long time, and we still are learning new things about them. And then uh, as we look at the sky with other uh, wavelengths and other instruments, looking, for example, at gamma rays that are coming from objects, so very high energy photons coming at us. We find new things almost almost every month. Uh, you know, sources that we didn't expect to be places where you'd see intense particle acceleration. And um, a lot of these seem to be coming to us in jets. So whatever explosion is happening in space, it produces these beams of particles, almost like a laser of particles. Interesting thing about those sources is that they all tend to be transient. They'll come and go. And so I think the major direction for the future is to have instruments that look over the sky, uh, sort of wide field telescopes, and cover a lot of the sky at the same time. You know, one uh, interesting thing about studying particle acceleration in the universe is that many um, mechanisms that we think about are similar to ones that we can do in the laboratory. And you probably heard that you know, this great discovery of the Higgs was done by accelerating particles in, at CERN in Switzerland to energies what we call about 10 TeV you know, of that order. Uh, the laboratory that we are provided by the universe can reach much higher energies than that. Uh, although we can't control it. So, you know, it's much better to do uh, when we can to do it in the laboratory that you can actually turn on and off whenever you want. But uh, I think the two things together really can um, help us understand both the interactions with the particles and how the universe actually behaves. So both things go hand in hand because, you know, these particles are being accelerated in the universe. So what is the mechanism behind them? Is it similar to the ones we use to get our particles accelerated in the laboratory? And then can we look at these particles and do physics that we are doing in the laboratory also and understand more you know, fundamental questions about the universe, about physics, about nature, how the particles interact. And I think uh, the universe provides us a lot more um, length scales, energy scales, and, and situations that we can't really do on Earth. And so it's, it sort of goes hand in hand and we can profit both ways, both the particle physicists and the astrophysicists talk to one another and learn a lot. You know, we, we see a flash of, of light coming from one direction. It's really bright. It rattles the window. And we say, wow, what, what was that? If we don't pursue that and then, you know, do the theory and the modeling and try to understand what it was, then we're really not going to advance our understanding of the universe. It's important to, you know, see where we came from. Also, by making these observations, we learn a lot about how physics works. And there are a lot of payoff from that understanding, because as our models of physics improve and, and we understand how things work, then we can also build things here on Earth that are of benefit to, the, to people, uh, in addition to learning what 
what's happening in the universe, it's always uh, a great curiosity. You know, most of the, the basics we can actually explain. But then, you know, nature keeps surprising us. And so the flares at the crab uh, pulsar, which is a very good old friend, which we seem to have thought we knew how it was supposed to behave, it's definitely surprising us. So there has been a lot of progress, but there's still a way to go.